I got early access to Comet, the new AI first browser by Perplexity. And by the time you're watching this video, you should be able to download it. But I wanna give you my first impressions of it since I've been testing it. And most of all, I see a glimpse into the future in which web browsing is completely different. It is me tasking an agent to go browse the web on my behalf. I am not interacting with websites directly. And to me, that's not such a bad vision. I actually kind of look forward to that. And as I show it to you, you'll kind of get that sense as well. And producer Alex called this vibe browsing. So if you like that term, you can thank him. And if you don't like that term, you can blame him in the comments. And by the way, if you want an up-to-date list of all of the best AI tools, check out our AI tool library from my team at Forward Future. I'll drop a link to it down below. All right, so this is Comet. It is what Perplexity is describing as an AI-first browser. And so the first thing to know is it is a fork of Google Chrome. So the second I opened it up, it asked me to import all my settings from my Google Chrome browser, which is my daily driver, and it just worked. All of the websites and the different apps that I use were already authenticated, so I didn't need to re-log into everything. All of my bookmarks were already there. My extensions just worked, and so it was instant to set up. There was really no setup to it. And the first thing I noticed before I even got into any of the AI features was it is lightning fast, surprisingly fast, especially because it's a fork of Chrome and it feels much faster than Chrome, just the speed at which web pages load. But of course, it's all about AI. And if you go to their getting started page, you can see a lot of the different use cases that they show off. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking the same thing I was, which is why was a browser necessary rather than just going to perplexity directly? Or why did they need to build a browser use agent into my browser versus doing it like most other browser use agents, which spin up a cloud-based environment to run in. And I was confused for a little while as to why that's valuable, why actually doing it locally in my browser was valuable. And then I figured it out and I'm gonna to get to that in a moment. So first let's look at some of the use cases that they show off on the website. Then I'm gonna show you some of the things I did with Comet and then I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts. So first, you know they had to go with the very generic test, which is put together a grocery cart for me with a certain recipe in mind. So put together a grocery cart at Instacart for me from Walmart, go ahead and it should be butter chicken. So you could see this launches multiple agents running in parallel that are doing browsing on your behalf in your browser. Now, you don't actually see the browsing happening when you do it this way, but it is happening locally. Here's another one, web browsing. Here's the AMA with Perplexity co-founder and CEO Arvind. So find the most frequently asked questions in this AMA and it does that. It basically just sees whatever you're browsing. And so yeah, they had some cool demos, but nothing I really hadn't seen before. And I started to think, why is having this browser use agent in my local browser important? Why did Perplexity make such a big bet and an investment into building their own browser? And then it finally made sense for a few reasons. One, platform risk. If you're building on top of somebody else's browser, Google Chrome, Safari, whatever browser you're using, then of course the default experience, whether you're talking about the default search engine, the default AI agent, is going to be native to whatever the browser company is offering. So for Google, it's gonna be AI mode. For Safari, when Apple actually gets their act together, they may release a browsing agent on Safari, and of course they're going to make that the native option, and so on. So one, Perplexity probably wanted to de-risk themselves from building on top of somebody else's platform. But again, why locally? And then it hit me. Whenever I've used a browser use agent that needed to spin up a cloud environment, you have to authenticate into it. And it's very frustrating. That was a huge point of friction for me using any of the browser use agents in the cloud. But when you do it locally, not only does it have access to everything you've already authenticated into, but it also has the context of whatever you're asking in that moment. So if I'm doing something on a website and I want an agent to help me finish what I'm doing, rather than having to start over in a cloud-based environment, I can simply ask Comet to take over from where I already am. And that's super useful. And so, of course, because it's Perplexity's browser, Perplexity is everywhere. Anytime that you type in a search in the URL bar, it is a Perplexity search, not default Google search. Anytime you open up a new tab, it defaults to Perplexity. And the real big change is this Assistant button in the top right. So if you click that, 
it is a perplexity assistant, just like opening perplexity here, but it is available to you as you browse. And the cool thing is you can at mention any of the tabs that you're working on and have it run tasks directly on that tab or give you information from that tab. So here's an example. Here's my interview with Aaron Levy. And since I am on this tab, it automatically shows the video right there. So I'm simply going to say, what is this video about? And obviously this is a very simple use case, but the important thing is you can get much more sophisticated and you can launch a bunch of these in parallel. So here we go. The video you're watching is an interview between Matthew Berman and Aaron Levy, CEO of Box. Here's what they discuss. Really nice. So I don't think the model is actually watching the video. What it's likely doing is looking through the transcripts and the description. The only model I know that can watch video, especially the video of this length, it's nearly an hour, is Gemini. And it definitely takes longer than just a second or two to actually generate the response. And so those are the main differences between your traditional Google Chrome and Perplexity's Comet. You get everything is native Perplexity, plus you get this assistant. And let me pause for a second and say, if you're into automating things with artificial intelligence, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, Lindy. Lindy is a dead simple way to build and deploy agents. It's kind of like if ChatGPT and Zapier had a baby. And Lindy just released Agent Swarms, which is the ability for Lindy agents to loop through large amounts of content and perform the same action repeatedly in parallel. Instead of having your AI do everything sequentially, Lindy will do things in parallel at a much faster speed. And the best part is you don't even need to know how to code to use Lindy. Let me show you it quickly. Here I have a Lindy automation that automatically generates sales emails. All you need to do is provide a name and an email and it will research each candidate and write a personalized outreach email cadence. Another great case study is Agent Swarms for research. Here I told it to do research about the impact of microplastics in the human diet. And instead of summarizing the content from a bunch of different sources, I'm going to deeply research each source and provide a summary for it. Lindy has more than 4,000 integrations. So if you can think of it, you can build it. And they're giving my viewers a special offer. Sign up for Lindy today and get $50 in credits absolutely free. That is the same as a one month free trial. Claim that offer by clicking the link down below and that also lets them know that I sent you, which I appreciate. So check out Lindy today and now, Back to the video. All right, so let me show you some of the things I did. So one of the example demos that they gave is find interesting contacts in my inbound LinkedIn connection requests. Okay, so I did that and it found it. I have a lot. I don't check LinkedIn very often. And then I said, accept all of those requests. And it did that. And it didn't really take all that long. So it went through and we can actually click in and see the different steps right here. So I can see the LinkedIn invitations manager page with 10 pending connection requests currently visible. I'll accept all of them by clicking the accept button. Then perfect, I can see I've done that. So one thing I would like to see, which it doesn't really have now, or at least I can't find it, is the ability to see each step in the process. It gives me kind of the chain of thought thinking of it going through the task that I assigned it, but it doesn't give me screenshots as far as I can tell. In the moment while it's doing that, it does show you the screenshots, but it doesn't seem to save it. Now, if I click over to the sources tab, I can see all of the people that were just accepted and there's the full answer. So it did it and it did it successfully, really easy. Here's another use case that I just wanted to test. Find the top rated comment on my recent YouTube video now, it turns out I actually got the YouTube handle wrong. There is an underscore in between Matthew and Berman and reply with, I'm replying to this using Comet browser use agents. So it did actually find the right YouTube account, surprisingly, because I gave it the wrong information and it found my most recent video. It found the top rated comment and it attempted to reply but it is not possible to post the reply automatically due to technical restrictions. So there are still a lot of cases in which automation is just not allowed by websites. Even though it's a browser acting on my behalf, even though it's a local browser, it still doesn't allow it. So it followed up and gave me instructions to do that instead, which not what I wanted, but fine. All right, next, another thing I wanted to try is helping me find a switch to in stock because I still can't find any near me. So I said, check electronic stores around me to see if there is a switch to in stock. Now, it acted just like perplexity.ai would, and it simply gave me a list of websites that I can check to see if there are any available. Now, 
what I wanted it to do was go check on my behalf. And so it's kind of weird. Sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. You have to be very explicit and say, go do this for me. So I told it, go to each of those websites and check it for me. And of course the answer, sold out everywhere. But that was really nice. This is something that I do often. I go to each of those websites and check to see if there's any inventory in stock. And now I can use Perplexity to easily do it for me. And so if I were going to perplexity.ai, the website, then it wouldn't have been able to actually use the browser and check those websites directly for me. That is why Perplexity built their own browser. And of course it can do other cool stuff. So you can say, who am I meeting today? It plugs in to Google Calendar. Now you can do this with Perplexity directly, I believe. They do have direct connections into the Google app suite, but it lists it. I can join the meetings pretty easily. So pretty nice. So another thing I wanted to do is see if I could tweet with it and it did. I said, find my recent tweet that starts with, I'm testing at Perplexity AI's new AI first comment browser, which I had just tweeted just a few minutes earlier and quote tweet it with my comment agent posted this. Now, of course, if you follow me on Twitter, which by the way, you totally should if you don't, it did work. And it says right here. So preparing to locate and quote tweet your current message. So locating, perfect, I filled it in and task succeeded. Now, one thing I wanna mention is it didn't just post on my behalf without asking me for permission first. Let me show you what that process looked like because I actually recorded it as I was doing it. So you can see it's asking me if I wanna continue or skip. So locate, quote tweet it with this message, and here is where it inserted its own created with Comet Assistant. And I click continue, so it inserted the text as you can see right there, and posted it. So here it is, my Comet agent posted this, but you see something created with Comet Assistant. I did not ask it to put that in, and I don't know why it did, and that wasn't the first time. It didn't just put exactly what I said in the tweet, it added that little bit at the end, kind of like when you send an email from Superhuman and it has the little sent with Superhuman, which of course, I'm sure there's a way to disable, but I didn't do it, and I would have expected it to at least give me the option to not have that. And as I mentioned, as you're browsing, you can have Comet actually do things on your behalf in the browser. So this is again, a slightly different experience, but let me show you that. So I'm on Twitter right now, and you can see right here, this is the context. It has the context of this tab, because that's what I'm looking at. So I can say, click into the trending Claude code link, and there it is. So let's see if it's able to do it. Now, as soon as I do that, it should start highlighting this page in blue. Let's see. Okay, so it's actually not doing it this time. Interesting. So usually, or at least the last time I did this, there was kind of a blue outline on the page, but this time it's not doing it. Now you can see it working right here. So task succeeded, found, and clicked into it, but it didn't really do it yet. However, in the background in its own tab, it seems to have done that. And I'm gonna ask it again. So I'm gonna say, make sure you click into Claude Code Trending in the tab I have open right now. Let's see if it does it this time. There we go. Okay, so you can see now it's taking over my browser. You can see the little spinning icon and it actually did that. Now, this error is an X error, a Twitter error. It has nothing to do with perplexity. X is just broken all the time. So it can see that something went wrong, okay? So it actually did that, it's refreshing the page and it's trying to get back there. There we go, okay, so it finally did do it. So it took a few steps, which I probably would have done myself, but it got there nonetheless. And then when it's finished, it should relinquish control back to me. Let's see, all right, so there it goes. It gave me a summary of what I'm seeing, what it did, and now I'm on that page and it relinquished control of the browser back to me. All right, so what does this all mean? I see a hint of the future in which rather than browsing websites directly and interacting with websites directly, I am interacting with my agent, which is interacting with the website. I'm going to be able to do so much more in parallel. I can kick off multiple agents. I can have scheduled agents and they can all run at the same time and just get so much more done. I don't want to go through the process of booking a flight. I just want it all done for me and then at the last moment, let me just approve it. I don't want to put together groceries. I don't wanna do a lot of things that I do on the internet every day and I want an agent to do that for me. And this also may help with the AI slop issue because as AI becomes more and more popular, we're gonna get so much noise as compared to signal and the only way to filter through it is going to be with an agent acting on my behalf. So I see the hint of the vision that they're going for. I think it's really cool. I'm gonna keep testing it. There are definitely some things that it's failing at and hopefully those get better, but we'll see. Let me know what you think. You should be able to download it right now. I'll drop a link down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.